Hey everyone, welcome to the very first lecture of this course. In this session, we will see the introduction to embedded system. So, what is embedded system? Embedded means permanent part of some big system. And what is system? System is something which works as per predefined set of rules. So, the overall definition of an embedded system comes out to be connected to some hardware and software components and designed to perform a specific task. Such system is expected to respond, monitor, control external environment using sensors and actuators, brains that control the embedded systems to perform the dedicated applications are microcontroller or microprocessor. You can see the broader picture of embedded system in case of an automobile system. In this picture, you can see a variety of embedded system designed inside a car to perform a dedicated task like battery management, cluster and heads-up display, blind spot detection, front view camera system, interior lighting, air suspension, smart rear camera, remote park, self-parking, secure gateway, tire pressure monitoring system, seat control, infotainment, window lift, emergency brake system and many more. All the system contain a number of MCUs embedded in it. Let's discuss the types of embedded systems. The very first is general computing. These are the system that involve basic computational functionality to achieve the desired objective such as set-top box, gaming console. Set-top box is used to receive the signal from a server or the station. The computation involved is frequency variation. Similarly, in the gaming console, the control is transferred from the remote to the gaming box. Second is control systems. The system whose objective is to control the equipments or the devices connected to it such as flight control, reactor control. Next is signal processing. These are the system in which a input signal is processed and converted to output signal that is understandable by human such as DVD player or MP3 player. In both these system the input signal is different from the output signal. Next one is communication system. These are the system that are involved in communication purpose like our mobile phones, internet that we use daily. Now characteristics and architecture of embedded system. There are seven major characteristics of embedded system. The very first is sophisticated functionality as discussed in the earlier slide that depends upon the functionality each embedded system can be categorized for particular task. Next is real-time operation. If we are sending any input to a system and we are not receiving the output within the expected time. So real-time operation is the unique property of an embedded system to respond within the expected time. Next is low cost manufacturing. Like as we discussed the system is connected with lots of devices including hardware and software component so the manufacturing should be a low cost next is application dependent whatever system is designed that is always dependent on the application specific next is restricted memory embedded system is restricted to lesser memory they don't have a huge amount of memory for the storage purpose small amount of memory that is used to keep the user code and some important data. Low power, of course the electronic systems are connected on battery. So the embedded system has a characteristic to use as low power as it can enhancing the lifetime of that embedded system. The last one is dedicated system. That means whatever system is designed, it should function smoothly upon the infinite time until and unless we are there to update something. Architecture of embedded system contain five major blocks. 
The very first is control law. A system has to realize some control law. That means they should follow a law from beginning to end of the system operation. Next one is sequential logic. The sequence should be designed as per the task specification. Like if any system is designed, then we need to take care that very first this function will be performed and after that this and so on. Next is signal processing. As we see in case of DVD player. Similarly, in our embedded system, the signal processing block is responsible for processing the inputs received by the sensor. Interfacing. Interfacing are the peripheral connected to a system to receive the input and give the output. So the interfacing contain the sensors and actuators connected to embedded system. And the last one is fault response. Like if the system is completely designed and if there is a failure, then the user should be notified that yes, there is a problem or there is a degradation in whole functionality of the system. So fault response is very much important block microprocessor versus microcontrollers. So the very first is objectives that what are the objectives of using a microprocessor and a microcontroller. So in case of microprocessor, these are used for the tasks that are not predefined or that required intensive processing such as gaming, web browsing, photo editing, creating documents, media, etc. Whereas controller are used for a specific task based on given input from the sensor or user. It do certain processing and give output such as washing machine, digital camera, oven, etc. Next is size. Now the microprocessor contains a standalone CPU and other elements like memory, input output ports, timers are connected externally depending upon the use case. Hence microprocessors are larger in size whereas microcontrollers contain CPU which is integrated with the elements like memory, input output ports, timers within a single chip. Hence microcontrollers are smaller in size. Next parameter is speed. Now microprocessor operates at much higher speed. Clock frequency ranges from 1 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz. Required memory is from 512 MB to 32 GB. Whereas ROM can extend from 128 GB to 2 TB. Peripherals like USB, high speed Ethernet and UART. Similarly, microcontrollers also operate on clock frequency but at lower speed and the frequency ranges from 1 MHz to 300 megahertz. It requires memory but very few from 2 KB to 256 KB. Flash memory from 32 KB to 2 MB and the common interface are like I2C, SPI and UART. But in high performance microcontroller, we have the high speed internet, we have the USB. Next one is capability. Modern processors can be of 32 bit or 64 bit as we can see in our windows operating system that earlier that used to be window 32 bit and now it is turned to 64 bit. That means all the addresses and data buses are of 32 or 64 bit. So it can handle 32 bits or 64 bits of data at the same time. In case of microcontroller, the modern day microcontrollers can vary from 8 bit, 16 bit or 32 bit. So the amount of data it can handle are less as compared to microprocessors. And last is power. Since the microprocessor are larger in size, operates at much higher speed and contain 64 bit addressing. So the power consumption as well as the cost of microprocessor is larger than the microcontroller. Whereas in microcontroller, power consumption as well as cost are less as compared to microprocessor. Next we come to categories of processing unit that what type of CPUs are there. Number one is based on instruction set. There are two types of processing unit. One is RISC and other one is CISP. RISC stand for reduced instruction set computer. These computers have 30 to 40 simple instruction and can be executed in single cycle. They have simple addressing mode and example of such system are Intel, Motorola, ARM. Whereas in CISC it stands for complex instruction set computer and there are 100 to 200 complex instruction and each instructions can be executed in more than one cycle. 
इट हैज कॉम्प्लेक्स एड्रेसिंग मोड एग्जाम्पल आर इंटल एट जीरो थ्री एट सिक्स माइक्रोवेक्स टू नेक्स्ट इज बेस्ड ऑन मेमरी आर्किटेक्चर देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ मेमरी आर्किटेक्चर वन इज वन न्यूमेन आर्किटेक्चर एंड अदर वन इज हार्वर्ड आर्किटेक्चर बस द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दिस आर्किटेक्चर इज वन न्यूमेन आर्किटेक्चर इज आर्किटेक्चर वो आर यूज इन कन्वेंशनल प्रोसेस वेयर डेटा एंड प्रोग्राम आर स्टोर्ड इन सेम मेमरी एंड सीरियल एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ कोड विद मोर साइकल्स वर देयर एंड देर वर नो मल्टीप्लायर एंड बैरल शिफ्टर टू इनहेंस द स्पीड वेयर एज हार्वर्ड आर्किटेक्चर आर यूज इन डी एस पीज एंड अदर लेटेस्ट प्रोसेस दिज हैव डेटा एंड प्रोग्राम स्टोर्ड इन सेपरेट मेमरीज पैरल एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ कोड्स आर देयर विद द प्रेजेंस ऑफ बैरल शिफ्टर इन बिल्ट दैट इज यूज टू शिफ्ट अ बल्क ऑफ डेटा विद इन नो टाइम एंड हैंस इनहेंसिंग द स्पीड ऑफ प्रोसेसर नेक्स्ट इज इम्प्लीमेंटिंग एम्बेडेड सिस्टम दिस इज द सिंपलेस्ट ब्लॉक डायग्राम ऑफ एम्बेडेड सिस्टम इन विच द वेरी फर्स्ट इज एस ओ सी दैट इज सिस्टम ऑन चिप सेकेंड पार्ट इज मेमरी एंड थर्ड वन इज पेरीफर सो एस ओ सी इज प्रोसेसिंग यूनिट रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर अचीविंग द डिजायर्ड रिजल्ट दैट वट एवर प्रोसेसिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड टू अचीव द डिजायर्ड ऑब्जेक्टिव दैट विल बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय दिस एस ओ सी मेमरी एज एक्सप्लेन अर्लियर दैट इट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द स्टोरेज ऑफ यूजर कोड एंड अदर इंपॉर्टेंट डेटा रिलेटेड टू दैट कोड एंड थर्ड पेरीफरल्स दीज आर द सेंसर्स एंड एक्चुएटर्स कनेक्टेड टू द एम्बेडेड सिस्टम टू इंट्रैक्ट विद द रियल वर्ल्ड और द इन्वायरमेंट इट रिसीव्स द डेटा फ्रॉम द इन्वायरमेंट एंड रिस्पॉन्ड दैम अकॉर्डिंगली सो दैट्स ऑल फॉर दिस सेशन सी यू इन नेक्स्ट लेक्चर थैंक यू